I preface today's message with the thought, no folks, I did not grow up on a farm. I don't like chickens. <laughs> Had cousins who were just a wee bit, well, not cousins, my father had uncles who were just a wee bit older than me who would run around my grandparents' farm grabbing a chicken and chasing me. And it changed my life forever <laughs> with a fear of those little fuzzy things that I wondered how anybody could eat them for years. And so with this, I remind us this morning that you can't herd cats, and that's a well-known truth. And what many poultry farmers have found is that you can't herd chickens either. But you know, pigs are no problem. Cattle are quite cooperative as well. But chickens, heavens, no. Not only will they not cross the road, they won't even cross a barnyard in some kind of orderly fashion. Now, and it's true enough that most of us here this morning don't have to be the least bit concerned about catching our chickens for dinner tonight. For the poultry we want, it's quite easy to obtain at Farm Fresh and Food Lion and Fresh Market and Trader Joe's. But there are certainly some other little pesky critters in our lives that we have quite a tough time capturing, controlling, and yes, subduing. And we call these little critters temptations. And they can be as frustrating as the fast flapping chickens, which drive poultry farmers to absolute distraction. Fortunately for us, Jesus speaks in our lessons today about controlling temptation. And if we use our imaginations and choose to call the temptations flapping chickens, then we just might be able to say that Jesus subdued three flapping chickens of temptation by relying upon Scripture, staying true to his calling, and absolutely refusing to put God to the test. Let's take a moment and look at flapping chicken number one. The temptation to turn a rock into a loaf of bread. Satan knew that Jesus was hungry. After all, he had just spent 40 long days in the wilderness without food. So this temptation made quite a bit of sense. But Jesus was not to be tempted, relying not on his stomach, but on his calling to feed others. Jesus refused to perform a miracle that would serve only his own special interest. And so he quickly grabbed this flapping chicken of temptation, and Jesus caged it with scripture. We hear Jesus proclaiming, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. So, one temptation down. Oh, but there's another flapping chicken of temptation awaiting our Lord. This time Satan offers Jesus all the kingdoms of this world. Look around you, says Satan. All of this will be yours. All of this will be under your control. 
if you will choose to worship me. Oh, what a tricky temptation this was. For with all that power, the fully human Jesus could have guaranteed world peace, universal employment, eradication of hunger, protection of human rights, the establishment of true justice. But that power would have come with a catch. Make yourself more important than God. Worship me. Worship Satan. But Jesus, staying true to his calling, once again answers Satan by quoting scripture. It is written, said Jesus, Worship the Lord your God. Serve only the Lord your God. Oh no, but that's temptation number one. Temptation number two. And Satan is not yet satisfied. Satan then offers Jesus a final flapping chicken of temptation. Satan takes Jesus to Jerusalem places him on the pinnacle of the temple and says to Jesus, If you are the Son of God, then throw yourself down from here. But this time, you notice that the temptation is slightly different. This time, Satan turns the table on Jesus by quoting scripture to suit His own purposes. Satan says, Jesus, God will command his angels concerning you. If you but do this, God is going to protect you. Oh, but our Jesus is a little bit smarter than Satan. And not to be outdone, but with the power of the Holy Spirit upon him. The incarnate Jesus responds to scripture with scripture. And we hear Jesus saying this morning, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. But what does this mean to you and me today? Oh, come on, pastor. I can hear you seeing it now. Flapping chickens of temptation. Yes. Three flapping chickens of temptation. And I dare say this morning that although this temptation story does not offer ethical instructions which cover every eventuality, in our lives. It does describe the perennial ethical challenges, the flapping chickens of temptations that you and I continually face. Think about it. The temptation to forget our baptismal identity, the temptation to use religion for personal gain, The temptation to choose success over faithfulness to God. The temptation to be dazzled by the riches of the world. The temptation to compromise when we are called to stand firm in the name of our Lord. The temptation to put our friends, our families, ourselves, Before God. The temptation. To avoid. Our own sacrificial. And suffering journey. To the cross. Of Calvary. On this past Ash Wednesday. 
churches throughout the world began a Lenten journey to the cross. And this morning, as we continue this journey, I entreat you on behalf of the one and only Christ, I entreat you to be reconciled to the one God, to the only God. I entreat you to drink in the mighty blessings of grace which will surely fall upon you this Lenten season. In the end, it may be true that cats will never be herded, and it may be equally true that chickens will be horribly difficult to manage. But your up close and personal flapping temptations, the flapping chickens of temptation within your own life might well be captured, might well be caged on your way to the cross. This morning, God is reaching out to each and every one of us. God is waiting patiently and lovingly for our absolute commitment to him and only to him. God is not waiting for an adherence to a list of rules and regulations. But God is reaching out to us, expecting us to be humble and mindful and obediently faithful to the call that God is giving to each of us during Lent. My sisters and brothers, this message of Lent It's not really about chickens and flapping chickens. This message of Lent is about each of us. It's for you and for me. It's for all of God's world. Forty lean days crossed by Sundays beginning with ashes and ending in the light of resurrection. This is the journey of Lent. Our journey has begun. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all of God's children say, Amen. Amen.